Hello summoners and welcome to another episode of Pro Guides' as Best Champions to Main, now on patch 12.14. The champions we pick for this series are strong picks with high performance but have low, low ban rates and are unlikely to be nerfed anytime soon. They are reliable picks for climbing and are worth investing your time in. We also have a series that covers the most broken contested picks in each row, so be sure you're subbed to the channel so you don't miss out when we post those as well. We'll be starting things out in the top lane with Rengar. This is one of those picks with quite a bit of a learning curve since you have to learn which combo to use when and how to pull them off smoothly. But once you do, he's an incredibly flexible laner that can deal with a variety of matchups. He's also pretty flexible build-wise. The build we have for him here is the general go-to, but you can go for a beefier bruiser build. Some people even go full tank, and some people even learn the champion so well they can go AP. It all depends on your playstyle preference and whether you want to change things up depending on yours and the enemy's team comps. Before we go any further, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction. But if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24-7 just waiting to share everything they know with you. So what are you waiting for? Stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head on over to ProGuides.com for some professional help now. Returning to our guide, our second top laner is Zac. Despite him having such a high win rate in multiple roles, he's still a pretty uncontested pick, so you'll definitely be able to get him in most games. He's a tank that isn't just a tank. With his high damage and sticking power, Zac is also a really deadly threat in teamfights. A lot of people shy away from tanks because they think they can't carry fights even when fed, but Zac can very easily solo out a carry or two in the enemy backlane if you get a hold of them. The last top laner for today is Dr. Mundo. Like Zac, he's another super beefy champion that has a lot of carrying power. Most people see Mundo and think tank, but he's technically a juggernaut, and when you're ahead on him, you'll definitely feel like one. Mundo is definitely a case of too tanky to focus down, but does way too much damage to ignore. Taking a look now at some junglers, the first pick we have is Rammus. His power comes from his extremely consistent ability to make picks. There aren't any flashy plays or crazy combos you go for with him. Early game, it's as simple as rolling into the easiest lanes to gank. Generally, that means allies with extra crowd control to layer onto yours or burst damage to follow up on your taunt. Later on, there are two modes for Rammus. The first is to play sort of like a Skarner, catching out opponents in bad spots and locking them down long enough for your teammates to take care of them. When the enemy team is fully grouped, your main goal is to reach their AD carry and keep them from hitting anybody else. For a lot of tanks, it can be hard to get past a full team trying to peel for your AD carry, but Rammus' ult allows you to fling yourself right through them and onto your target. The other mode is just going for 1v1 kills. A lot of AD carries or auto-attacking champions will really struggle to deal with your high armor and thornmail damage. The second jungle pick we have is Nunu. With him being a jungler that really excels at taking objectives, we think he's gonna be a pretty strong pick this patch, since both Dragon and Rift Herald reward you a lot more now. Of course, just being good at taking those epic monsters isn't enough to make him a good pick. His ability to serve as a frontliner with some picking power and decent engage makes him fit into just about any comp, not to mention how great he is at ganking in the early game. The last jungler we'll talk about is Elise. While Riot has spent the last couple of seasons trying to get rid of snowballing, especially with the durability patch just a few patches ago, this patch is sort of working in reverse of that, at least a little bit. So champions that can control the map early, like Elise, are gonna be a lot better. That isn't to say that we are back to a full-on snowball meta, it's just that your early game efforts will be met with better rewards when you're successful and you won't fall off as quickly and as badly as before. Basically, she's still somewhat high risk since you do still need to win the early game, but she's also a lot higher reward. Now for the mid lane, the first pick we have is Kiana. Lately, Kiana has been doing pretty well being one of the top performing champions in the role, and with this patch being good for champions with strong laning phases, you can expect that to stay the same. She's also super strong in early game teamfights, so she'll be huge for securing those dragons and rift heralds. 
The second mid laner we have for you is Aurelian Soul. Wow, I never thought I'd say that. He's definitely not a pick for everyone, but there's a reason he's one of the least played champions of all time. Still, if you haven't tried him, give him a go. Maybe he'll click for you. It may be a bit metagamey, but him being so rare means that most people have no idea how to lane against him, which is a legitimate advantage to picking him. He does have a bit of a one-dimensional playstyle. Everyone knows he's going to roam eventually, but trust me, that doesn't make it any less effective. People still slip up and end up giving up kills to your roams anyways. And even when they don't, they're forced to sit back, miss out on farm, sometimes even XP, which is still generating your bot or top a big lead. The final mid laner for today is Kennen. He's a seriously slept on champion that more people should be abusing in this role. In top lane, he suffers from the champion pool being all champs that can chase him down in the long lane. But in mid, you can poke and bully most of the lower threat foes and in the few bad matchups, you can at least kite back since the lane is much shorter. And of course, his ultimate makes him another really amazing champion for early fights that should be happening more often as you can test objectives. There's definitely a lot of contention over the State of League post durability patch, but honestly, there's always people complaining about the game. I mean, there's never gonna be perfect balance, but I actually think the game is in a really fun spot right now. All champ types are being played a decent amount, and the game doesn't feel as snowbally or have zero counterplay as it did for the past few years. Which brings us to today's question of the day. How do you feel about the state of the game overall right now? For me, it's too many heals, too many shields. Those two things I think need to be dialed back quite a bit. That's about it. And that's what I feel about the game, but we wanna hear from you. So let us know in the comments below what you think about the state of the game right now. And let's get back to our video. Moving things down to the bottom lane, the first pick we have is Miss Fortune. She has not received any direct changes herself lately, but with most hyper carries being nerfed in recent times and the enchantress that pair so well with them getting hit this patch, she's going to be one of the top tier picks. Heimer's buffs on 12.12 were definitely over the top with him having a super high win rate in every non-jungle role, yet he continues to be a massively underplayed champion. And I don't really get why, it's not like Aurelian Soul where you have some intimidating awkward to play champion that feels clunky or hard to learn. Heimerdinger is super easy to pick up and you basically auto win lane with him when you do. And he doesn't just win early, he scales really hard having consistently high DPS and the option between even more damage with his ultimate turret or a huge AoE CC with his grenade. And at 20 minutes with your ultimate you can always do Baron. The final pick for our bot lane carry is Caitlyn. Caitlyn has received a couple of buffs recently, but they didn't quite do the job for her. She's still been struggling a bit. She can dominate lane like always, but struggles to translate it into much afterwards. But as we've touched on, lane priority means quite a bit more of this patch so you can secure early objectives. We're hopeful that this finally gives her the nudge she needs to be back to being strong in the meta. You definitely want a lane dominant support to pair with her to double down on the whole being oppressive in lane and bullying your opponents really hard. Preferably, you want a mage like Velkos, our first support pick we'll be talking about. Enchantress and a couple of select engaged supports will still be pretty strong, but if you want to really win the bot lane 2v2, the strong poke mage supports are always your best bet. You just constantly shove in and poke your opponents over and over again and win a war of attrition over time. It may sound like I'm oversimplifying here, but playing Velkos really is that easy. You just gotta hit your spells. Or if you're feeling a bit more high risk, high reward, you could try Talia. Instead of perma shoving and spamming poke from halfway across the screen, with Talia, you're gonna be going for a more direct approach, looking to combo your opponents for big bursty traits. With an aggressive enough AD carry, she could easily be considered a kill lane support. She's also really good in skirmishes, so don't be afraid to roam up river and fight with your jungler in early fights. Taking advantage of her passive movement speed near walls means you'll almost always be there before anyone else. Finishing off our list, we have Amumu. Most tanky supports have been pretty bad for the past several months, but Amumu is one of the exceptions. He's good at all stages of the game, being deadly as a kill lane support for aggressive AD carries like Samira or Draven, with his ultimate giving you a way to all in and guarantee kills post 6, but he's also extremely valuable for the dragon fights that were putting so much value on this patch, with a good ultimate being able to set your team up for a very easy cleanup job. 
And that is it for our top three champions to main on 12.14. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on our meta guides and so you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know your thoughts on the state of the game down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys for the next video, but until next time, good luck on the rift and may the LP gods smile down upon you.